Hey, live TV viewers, this is John Ross, uh, and we're here with uh, Robin Barron and John Miller of the Your Convergence Personal Chef and Sommelier Service, and uh, they've led us into this beautiful show kitchen, as you can kind of see behind me, and we're going to learn how to make the shrimp and cream cheese dip. So, John, tell us a little bit about the shrimp and cream cheese dip, and, and I should tell you guys that... You know, when I came to them, we met a couple of months ago, and they told to, to, you know, kind of give me the rundown on what they do. And I came back with them that, you know, all your gourmet stuff is beautiful, and we'd love to hear about it. <laughs> we need, for our purposes, something that you can whip up in five seconds. Five, five minutes. We'll give you five minutes. John, so tell us a little bit about why you chose this and, and, and that kind of stuff. Well, I wanted to choose things that most people would probably have in their kitchen. You know, if someone should happen to just drop by, and you need to make something... Um, so I'm making a cream cheese dip. Most people have cream cheese, if you're a bagel eater like me anyway. It um, has a little crispy bacon in it and cooked shrimp. A lot of people have uh, shrimp in their freezer. And I want to make something that could be used more than one way. So I'm going to put it on a cracker, and I'm also going to make like a veggie dip out of it. It's the same thing, just used two different ways. So The uh, cream cheese dip has um, basically four ingredients. It has green onions, cooked shrimp, and crispy bacon that's been chopped up. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut up the green onions. It also has a pound of cream cheese in it, which is one of the large tubs in the grocery store. <laughs> um, I just like to slice these pretty thin so you don't get big, huge hunks of uh, green onion in there. There's two scallions. I only use the green part because um, it's for color as much as it is for flavor. And the white part is a bit thicker and it's not quite as sweet as the green part. It's five slices of bacon that I rendered to make it crispy and then drained off the fat and let it cool down. Definitely want to let it cool down or else you'll get a cream cheese mushy mess. And then the shrimp, a half pound of shrimp. And I'm just going to chop them up. They don't have to be real fine. You kind of want to keep some good chunks in there so you can tell when you're eating the shrimp. I don't like shrimp puree. Put that in the mixer. If you don't have a KitchenAid mixer, you can definitely mix it by hand. You just want to make sure that the cream cheese is soft or else you'll be breaking your arm trying to mix it up. Should you leave it out for, how do you? I left it out, I left it out for about an hour. Okay, you know, right. Cream, cream cheese is, is, is fine to, uh, to leave out for a little while, so it's not really Put just a little bit of salt, about a teaspoon or so, and fresh cracked pepper. About a half teaspoon. Well, I don't like to use a whip. Basically, because you lose a lot of it inside the whip, it just all gets stuck in there. So, just use the paddle. If you're using like a hand mixer, um, the, the regular attachment for those are just fine. You can just take it, since it's soft enough, you just spoon a little bit right, right onto the pita chip or cracker. But it's also sturdy enough that it'll stay out. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you added. Um, you know, if you'd use like sour cream or something like that, sour cream as it gets warmer gets pretty liquefied and it, uh, it wouldn't work. Cream cheese will hold its structure pretty well. So, and you, so this recipe that you gave us um, would serve about... Uh, well, I would say if you had six to eight people drop by, you'd be doing some good munching for a, you know, for a while. So, I mean, you could... Um, you can easily double it or cut it in half if you wanted to. Um, it's pretty good to let everyone snack on All right. for a little while. And the easiest way to get it off the spoon really is to use your fingers, unfortunately. <laughs> wash first. Wash first, wash second, and maybe wash again. And then, you know, I garnish them with, I'm going to use a couple different things. I use these little sliced kosher dill pickles, just a real thin slice. Oh, okay. Um, you know, just to make them look pretty. It's not anything that really is all that time consuming. But it also kind of makes it look like you made three different things, too. <laughs> even, though, even though it's only one thing. Yeah, that looks 
great. That didn't take too long either. No. What about oh yeah? Let's I mean, the, the the real time, you know, was like it took me about two minutes to cook the shrimp and about five minutes to cook the bacon. But other than that, you know, it doesn't really take all that long. So this is um Robin's bargain basement wine. <laughs> it's actually good, and people won't be upset that you brought it to the party. Well, we should first say that you've, you've sampled $800 bottle of wine, right. things that have been aged in personal cellars, and, and you know, I heard all this, and then when I was trying to figure out what we should do for this segment, we asked Robin to please show us great wines for $12 or less. So this is what she came up with. Tell us a little bit about these two. Um, this is a great alternative to your champagne. It's actually a cava. It comes from a Machiavelli grape. Um, it is a sparkling wine, and it's um, fermented in the bottle, which is your, all your good champagnes are going to be fermented in the bottle as opposed to um, a secondary fermentation before it goes in there. Um, one thing with um, champagne, and just because New Year's is coming up too and it's always good to really know how to open a bottle safely, and I see this in restaurants all the time and servers should probably watch this too. <laughs> um, what you want to do is first take off the foil. This one has one of these nifty little tabs, which we all love. So whenever you open a bottle, you're going to do it um, so that you have your little cage here. And it's always six turns for this cage. Now the important thing to know is that when you're opening a bottle of champagne, you never want to take this cage off of the bottle or the cork. Because ah. what this is doing is this bottle is under pressure. And it will happen that you'll take this cage off and the pop will the cork will just pop off all by itself. So it's very important to, I like to grab a towel, paper, nap, paper napkin, anything, hold your thumb over the top of the bottle and then unscrew the cage. So this way you are not going to poke anyone's eye out or dent your ceiling. <laughs> leave it on there, kind of loosen it up, leave it on there and then take the whole thing and then we can safely open the bottle. Voila. Yes. When you pour champagne, just make sure that you go slowly, because all when when you pour it to the top and then let it go back down, you really are losing all those bubbles. So the slower, the better. Let's say you're taking a bottle of wine to the holidays, and you don't necessarily know if these people even like wine all that much. Um, this is a great bottle. It's a Vouvray. It's the um, Chenin Blanc grape. This happens to be from France. Um, Vouvray is a region in France where they grow the Chenin Blanc grape. And this is really going to have a lot more fruit forward characteristics. I'm um, really like apple, pear, some apricot, and it's even almost on the semi-sweet side. So um, I've really never met a person who didn't like this wine. My neighbor right behind us actually is a stylist and she said, Robin, you know, I just don't like wine that much. Um, and I said, well, that can't be. We have to fix this. So we immediately <laughs> went down to the local grocery <laughs> store and um, I, I got this bottle and I said, well, try this. So even for the people that don't necessarily like wine, this is a great one. It's about um, $8 a bottle, and um, it's going to go with everything on your holiday table. So there you have it. $12 or less. You really, that's, that, is a, that is a feat. Bubbles for $12 or less.